Ladies and gentlemen, easy aces. Brother Johnny finally forgot his pride and went to work at the great Everett department store, owned by his millionaire father-in-law. But he insisted on going to work there incognito. This episode takes place a few nights later, about nine o'clock, and is in alternating scenes between the Ace's bungalow and a section of the mammoth warehouse of the department store. But first to the Ace's, where we find Jane and Mr. Ace keeping cool on their front porch. Listen. I think it's as hot tonight as it was last night. Mm-hmm. But it was as hot this afternoon as it was yesterday afternoon. Mm-hmm. I think when the evenings out here aren't very cool, it's a sign it was awfully hot in the afternoon. It takes time to cool things off. Mm. I had a letter from Mother, and she said it was so hot back home they could fry an egg on the sidewalk. Oh. But I think fried things in the summer are the worst things you can eat. I wrote and told her so. She ought to be careful. Is that a breeze? Mm-hmm. Oh, say something. I can't sit here talking. What? I said, was that a breeze? It's gone now. It's too late. I thought I felt a little breeze, but it don't... Oh, there it is again. Feel it? Yeah, I better go in and get my top coat. Oh, it's gone. Look how quiet those trees are. Nothing moving. You know, it reminds me of that poem. It was the night before Christmas, and all through the house, not a creature was stirring, not even a mouse. This night reminds you of the night before Christmas? Well, the part about not a creature was stirring. Yes, I know, Jane. <laughs> yes. Isn't it quiet? Listen to the critics. The critics? Hush, dear. Well, that's a sign it's going to get hotter. It can't get much hotter around here, though. Our thermometer can't get any hotter than it is. Oh, there's a falling star. Hurry, dear, make a wish. I wish you'd keep quiet about how hot it is. Oh, I'm just trying to make conversation. Well, I don't like small talk. Well, you can't talk loud around here. You want people to think we're fighting? Oh, there goes a cloud over the moon. I wouldn't be surprised if it rained one of these days. Uh, I wouldn't either. Miracles happen around here. Your brother went to work. That was the Here, I told you not to mention that. Yeah, I know. It's quite a disgrace for Johnny to be working. No, not a disgrace for... I told you he doesn't want anybody to know he's working there. I'm sorry I told you. You didn't have to tell me. I knew about it. Everybody knew it. Marge, everybody. Yes, but everybody's got to keep it a secret. Dumb's the word. Yeah, you said it. You know how upset he'd get if he knew we knew he was working. He just thinks Alice and her father know. I'm surprised he's still there. I wonder what kind of a job he picked out for himself. Oh, I don't know, but he gets $18 a week. $18. That's the guy that thinks of money in terms of four figures only. Well, uh, $18 can be four figures, like a one and an eight and a period and And two two odds. Yes, that's $18, all right. Well, it gives him spending money, and he doesn't have to ask Alice for money. Imagine living in that mansion with all those servants and those big cars and working for 18 bucks a week. (laughs) That ought to be a come down for him. That ought to make him realize that he's not the big shot that he thinks he is. Oh, is that car stopping here? I don't know. It's so dark. I I think it is. 
Why, mm. yes, it is. Uh, shall I turn on the porch light? Oh, never mind. Somebody probably just parking here and going across the street. Oh, I no, think. they're not. He's coming up here. Is that you, Jane? Oh, yes. Is Alice there? Oh, uh, can you see all right, Alice? Yes, I'm all right. Are you alone? Where's Johnny? That's what I'd like to know. Hello, Alice. And house. Thank you. What do you mean, that's what you'd like to know? I'm worried. Why, do you know that for three nights now, Johnny's been going out right after dinner? Going out where? Well, he said he's going back to the store to work. Working nights, too? Well, speaking of miracles... But what's there to do at night? Oh, your father ought to be able to answer that. That's just it. Father's out of town. And for three nights now, I've had to stay there in that big home alone. I can't stand much well, more. Well, you can always come over here. Oh, it's not that. I'm worried about him. Why does he have to work nights? Well, the only answer I can figure out is that he's trying to make up for all the years that he's been loafing. Oh, you know that's not it. Sometimes I even wonder it. Well, if he is working. What? Oh, now, Alice, you're talking about my brother. Well, he's my husband. Why, he's as innocent as a new mown hay. Why, Johnny... All right, Jane, don't get worked up. I tried to talk to him tonight. I tried to make him stay home. But he said he had things to do at the store. It's been three nights now that he's gone back to the store, and he doesn't get back till after midnight. What's he do there? Well, did you try asking him? Yes, I finally came right out and asked him point blank. All he said was that he had work to do and a chance to make some extra money. Extra money. Oh, by the way, what department is he working in? In the fur department, fur coat. Well, this the... is what time of the year, a funny time of the year for fur coats to be busy. I know he. That's why I'm beginning to wonder if he Oh, really... he probably does go down there. I don't doubt that part of it. It's just what he's doing there. Then. I offered to drive him there tonight, but he refused. That it wouldn't look right for an $18 a week employee to be driving up in a big car. Well, how does he go? Oh, on a street car or bus? Well, that's quite a come down for Johnny. Why, why don't you call up the store during a day and try to find out just what well, it I is? I thought of that, too, but I don't know what name he's working under. He hasn't told you the name he's using? He hasn't told me a thing. If I only knew what name he went under, I might be able to find out something about these things. But this new mug that just went to work. This Joe Smith. I don't think it's safe to bring him in on this. Listen, Joe's okay. I felt him out for two days. Yeah? What'd he say? Said he was always interested in making some easy money. Did you tell him what the racket was? No, I thought I'd leave that up to you. But he's okay. Don't worry about Joe. What kind of a guy is he? Well, he's a regular sort. We talked it over like you told me. I kind of hinted around that $18 was pretty small pay for the kind of work we do and that we might get a chance to make some really important dough. Yeah? And he wanted to know how. I told him just to keep his eyes open and his mouth shut. He might be cut in. He ought to be here now. Guess he had trouble finding the place. Stranger in town, is he? Yeah. Said he came from up north somewhere. I wonder how they happen to put on a new man this time of year. Furs ain't so important right now. He said they expected a big season. Yeah, I should say they do. You ought to see the stuff they're shipping in every day. We ought to clean up enough to fix us for life. Them storage vault furs are going to be easy. We go through those tonight. That must be Joe. Okay, let him in. And let me do the talking. Sure, Tom. I understand. Hello, buddy. Grandma late? I was wondering where you were. Oh, couldn't find the place. It's good dock around here. I thought you might have trouble. Oh, Joe, this is Tom. He's in charge of the fur storage. Hi, boy. Hello, Tom. Buddy's been telling me you're new here. Yeah, just flew into town looking for work. You're lucky to find it, too. I was up against it. Yeah? Ever done any of this kind of work before? Well, no. <laughs> but between you and me, I told Crandall, the guy that hired me, that I knew all about the fur business and he fell for it. <laughs> but he's been showing me the ropes. He's okay, Tom. Catches on fast. Yeah? What was your racket before you got here? Racket? He means, what did you do? Oh, oh as best I could. You know, <laughs> dollar here and a dollar there. So you're interested in making a little extra dough, are you? Oh, sure. Always interested in making a little more money. Well, we might have a chance for you. And it might be more than just a little extra. Yeah? How? How's your nerve? Nerve? Yeah. Can you take it when it comes to doing something that might be just, uh, what you might call, uh, legitimate? Oh. What Tom means is... He knows what I mean. Well, I don't think I do. Uh, what's the game? The game is to keep your eyes open and your mouth shut. Think you can do that? Is that all? No. You got to lend a hand here with the stuff in storage. Oh, the, the furs that are stored here, huh? That's for a starter, yes. 
Uh, I think I get it. Every night we put away a few. Yeah. That's up to you and Buddy. Uh-huh. You've got to bust them and see that they get on a certain truck when it pulls up here in a few days. Yeah. Think you can do that? Yeah, I think I sure can. Sure he can. Come on, let's get going. Well, wait a minute. Where do I come in? You'll get yours. You get a century a night. A hundred dollars? Yes, Joe. It's easy money. Well, I'll say it is. A hundred bucks a night. Come on, let's get started. Well, I can understand it, Alice. He only gets eighteen dollars a week, and he wants to make some extra money. Oh, suppose he does make a couple of dollars more. It's not for money. Staying home alone night, night after night. Well, but you wanted him to go to work. Yes, and haven't I regretted it? As soon as father gets there. Yeah, you can take it up with him. But that won't be for a couple of weeks yet. I can't go on like this. Jane, you're his sister. Can't you do something about it? About being his sister? No, it's too oh, late for that. Oh, quiet, you. Well, he said... Please, that... Jane, I'm a nervous man. Will you let me talk this over with Alice alone? Oh, if that's going yes, to be that's the going way. to be the way we're going to do it. Now, Alice, let me see. Uh, what would be the best plan to get at this? Uh, what you're interested in is having him home night. Yes. Uh, how about trailing him? How about waiting around the store after he leaves home? You can get there ahead of him if he goes on a streetcar, like you said, park there someplace, and then see if he shows up. And if he doesn't, you want me to torture myself thinking all sorts of things? No, 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 thank you. Oh, you don't want to know, is that? You women are certainly... Well, I think that's good about driving there and seeing if he comes to the store or not. I like that. Oh, you like that idea? Uh Uh-huh. Hmm. Then there must be something wrong with it. Let's think of something else. Oh, no, there's nothing wrong with it. Oh, I know. How about driving down there now and waiting till he comes out and then surprise him? Now? Yes. Alice says he doesn't come home till after 12. Well, we can wait there and see if he comes oh, out. Oh, no, not me. I'm not going tracing around town till midnight on a wild goose chase. He is not. If he says he's working, I know he is. I believe Johnny. And I'm ashamed of Alice for thinking the thing she does, the idea. If he says he's working, then he's working. Absolutely. And besides, if he doesn't come out, then we'll know he wasn't telling the truth. Oh, you believe him, though. I'll say the word. Come on, let's go. We can go in Alice's car. Do you think we should? Well, I don't like staying up till midnight. Oh, it's too hot to sleep anyhow, dear. I've got to find out. After all, he's my brother. Mm, And are you your brother's keeper? No, I'm my brother's sister. Oh, you're your brother's sister. Yes. Come on, let's go, Alice. Come on, dear. Well, Jane and Alice and Mr. Ace are due for a surprise when they find Johnny's not at the department store. But is Johnny really working for some extra money, or is he playing Fox? We'll learn more details when next we meet the Easy Aces. 